Hello and welcome back to my channel and in this new series I will talk about the King Air 200 and the King Air B200 systems. On today's video I will talk about the auto feather systems. We all fear myself on a multi-engine aircraft for the reason of if one engine failed the other one is here to bring us back home safely. And that is true most of the time. However, there is a short period of time during a takeoff or go around where it can't actually be more dangerous than a single engine aircraft. Every multi-engine aircraft has a VMCA for minimum control air speed. The minimum control air speed is where the airflow going through the rudder is not enough to maintain a directional control with the asymmetric credit from the engine remaining. And that is even more true if you lose a critical engine. To prevent the plane to end up in a VMCA, the pilot will need to remove the drag from the propeller by feathering as soon as possible, before the aircraft lose too much speed. We are talking about seconds, for the worst case scenario. I'm going to show you a small video of a real accident to see the effect of an aircraft entering the VMCA. These images are shocking and can be disturbing, so please, at your discretion, you are advised. The autofeather system is here to help the pilot in the event of an engine failure by feathering the right propeller as soon as the engine stops providing thrust. The pilot will be able to focus on flying the airplane, reducing the risk to enter in a VMCA. But how works the autofeather on the King Air 200 and B200? The switch is located between the initial and the prop governor test. Before takeoff, the pilot will have to arm the system. When armed, the power will go all the way to the macro switch located within the power levers. The macro switch are set for one N1, which 90%. The 200 pounds torque switch should already be open from the engine running. As soon as you advance the throttle, the 400 pounds torque switch will move to the open position. When the power lever makes contact the macro switch, the auto feather annunciator light will illuminate. The system is now set and ready. If the torque goes below 400 pounds, but the power lever has set for at least 90% of N1, the 400 pounds torque switch will close, and the annunciator light on the opposite engine will extinguish. At that point, the auto feather on a good engine is disconnected. If the engine keeps losing power to the point the 200 pounds torque switch closes, the relay will be powered and the overspeed governor will dump the oil from the propeller systems and the counterweight and spring will feather the propellers. If you lose your engine during a takeoff, the first action the pilot must do is to confirm the affected propeller are feathered. The pilot monitoring will need to confirm which engine has feathered and also confirm by saying negative auto feather if the propellers do not feather. In this case, an immediate action must be taken to feather the propeller as soon as possible. When the pilot monitoring check to confirm if the propeller are feathered, he she can look either at the RPM, which should be at zero, or visually look at the propeller to see if they are feathered. The system must be on for takeoff and landing. On the King Air climb checklist, it's said to disconnect the auto feather. My personal experience, N1 never goes below 90% during climb, and having the auto feather ready in the event of an engine failure during climb can be very appreciated. So I am one of the people who recommend to keep it on during climb. However, the auto feather has no moving part, giving no fatigue on the system when on. So I do not see why we cannot keep it on all the time, knowing we need it for landing in the event of a missed approach. I did her once. There is two reasons why we should turn off the system when in cruise, but I do not remember why. So if you know why we should turn off, please leave a comment down below. And as you are there, put a like on the video. That will help me making more videos and maybe one day making a few bucks from it. Before beginning a flight, it is very important to check your auto feather system to make sure it works properly. I saw many pilots skipping the run-up, but I never saw anybody skipping the auto feather test. Mostly when you are flying a four bladers. The aircraft is certified to fly with an auto feather inoperative when equipped with three blades. 
but for a four-blader aircraft equipped, there is no release. The autofeather must be operational. First, all the spring loaded to switch test. Then increase the power to about 500 pounds torque and notice the annunciator light goes on. Then retard the left power levers to about 350 to 400 pounds. And then notice the annunciator light going off on the opposite engine. Then continue to retard the power levers to about 200 pounds and then notice the prop feathering and the annunciator light flashing. The annunciator light will flash because during the feathering, the torque will increase just enough for the 200 pounds torque switch to close and then reopen when the torque decreases again. Put the power back to 500 pounds and check the both lights are illuminated again. Repeat the same action with the right engine to confirm both auto feather work. Only one part of the auto feather system was not been tested are the macro switches. This one can be checked during the takeoff roll. When setting the takeoff power, you will be able to check two systems at the same time. The first one are the auto ignition, which should go off at 400 pounds torque, and the auto feather annunciator light, which should go on also at 400 pounds torque, but only when N1 is at 90%. That's it for this video. Please don't be afraid to leave a comment, press the like button to help my channel to grow, subscribe to it if you want to know when I release my next video. Right now I'm making a system about the King Air 200, so if you have any system in mind you want to see, um, let me know. In the meantime, I wish you a safe flight and see you in the next video.